All right, everybody. Welcome back to your six cover. Appreciate you showing up. We're going to have some fun tonight. It seems the four knuckleheads that automatically dislike Ray's channel haven't found Rick's channel yet. <laughs> Let me get to the top here. Carcane is first up. I appreciate it, Carcane. I was just watching Who the Who site. The Barrett 50 BMG deer hunting overkill to stay the least. Now, if you guys don't know, and I'm completely having fun, there's a lot of videos out there about a 50 cal BMG basically missing a deer and vaporizing it and killing it. That is completely false, just in case you guys didn't know. I see, I still hear people talking about the 50 cal, how it can just, the vapor coming off of it can kill a deer. It's completely a bunch of farce. 45 Auto live from the global headquarters of Is Your Six Covered Productions. That's right. Appreciate it. We'll, we'll be live eventually. That's right. Seems like the four knuckleheads. Let me catch up. Commando 97. Darian, Neil, hopefully I'm saying that right. No, that's Dryan. Dryan, hopefully I'm saying that right. Lakeview Outdoors, what's going on, my friend? What the hell? Did you notice the snow ring around the moon tonight? I have not. I haven't even looked at it. What the hell? How is everybody doing tonight? TV says Daniel got as my judge. Robert Warren, Brian T. Ranger, 10 millimeter. What's going on? Steve Healy so far. So I got some uh, we've been talking about. You guys can see in the back over here. The shipment has finally arrived. We got Eagle Eye shooting out there. We have uh, let me get a box here. We got some Gallo Tech. We got boxes everywhere. We got a box over here. This has all, if you guys aren't familiar with what this is, Gallo Technologies. So Gallo Tech basically is what you hear, but it's basically a whole rifle system that attaches to your wall. What's up, John Kreiderman? TV, smash that damn thumbs up button, everybody. We got 15 in here so far, so we're starting off pretty good. Um, so. Inside of all these boxes over here is different types of mounting systems for all the different rifles, pistols, and so on. I'll do a better video of this, but I figured I'd start off with showing you guys it has arrived yet. There, uh, this is, what model is this? Gallotech 1091. The 1091. So this is going to go from this section of the wall to right about here. I don't know if that was in view. Yeah, it was in view. And then basically from right about here all the way up to right here. So it, it's going to encompass this whole wall. So we got nine panels. This is two of them. There'll be one here centered. And then along the whole thing here. So we got two more boxes over here. They actually shipped the second day. So the first day, four boxes showed up. And uh, we're like, what the hell? So they showed up today so one was a little smash but it's all good see mom's out there we got lakeview outdoors dan the guys my judge jerry parker who am i missing man 018 your walk-in safe is going to be badass when i'm done yes i'm hoping it is i'm hoping it is got a lot to go got a lot to go still i got uh i think tomorrow or after thanksgiving is going to be the uh, mini split be installed over here right here on this wall I still got to do the cages for the windows and the safe door and what else oh the urinal so the plumbing stuff still needs to be done the sink I got a buddy that's supposed to be dropping one off or I'm supposed to pick it up or something I don't know <laughs> um, it's gonna be a wash wash basin and uh, a urinal so that's coming around so I got some more drywall done the other day. I did jump on the Scotsman's chat and we did a little, I did a little drywall mudding while it was going on. So got some more of that figured out. And then I uh, got some sanding to do and some painting. And then we'll have a nice roof and some walls over here. We got these knuckleheads over here doing something. And uh, I'm gonna show you guys, we've been talking a lot of smack about Rick's rifle, the new one, the Six Creedmoor. And uh, I will say thanks to ATF Hydrographics for doing the work. Came out well. Let's see. Bunny farts out there. What's going on? Don't confuse the wash basin and the urinal. Yeah, exactly. I don't think it'll be tall enough for the wash basin. Your studio should be best friend's studio because you're all making them at the same location. 
yeah well as soon as the internet gets done as soon as the camera and uh the screen here gets done where we can actually read the comments there's the crazy scotsman right there i was just talking about you how i was on your chat earlier we are coming over here and we're going to talk about this rainbow rider so a lot of you guys may or may not have seen this beautiful beast of a of a rifle <laughs> <laughs> i got laughs already got some laughs this rifle was uh custom built by desert precision uh kenny i think he's out there right now in the chat this is on an Axiom Action by Curtis. And a uh, beautiful rifle. It's got some custom engraving on the barrel. It says IY6C. On the front of the muzzle, it says hashtag still a dick. So if you're new to the channel and you haven't seen those videos, basically this was uh, an FDE MDT chassis. Very boring. And uh, that was the thing. It was very boring. So rattle cam paint job. Yeah, Mike 21. Actually, the rattle cam paint job, the Tika's sitting right over there in its case. Shot that, uh, not today. Shot this one today out to 700 yards. Did really well. Shot like a dream. The chassis, or not, the action as smooth as can be. So really loving that. Uh, what did you name it? I haven't named it yet. It's probably going to be something like Skittles or something like that. Um, unicorn, rainbow vomit. I don't know. It doesn't really matter. It's, uh, it's a piece to talk about, I guess. <laughs> It's bright, it's kind of ugly, but it's mine. It's kind of like, you know, when you have that kid that uh, is just yours and it's ugly as shit, but it's yours. Well, I don't know anything about that, but you, maybe you guys might, but you know, you got to claim it. It's what it is. It's the Rainbow Rider. I got Knucklehead 1, <laughs> Knucklehead 2, Knucklehead 3. So if you guys aren't familiar with this guy, even though he doesn't make videos ever, this is the Trunk Monkey Review on YouTube. This is Jack Wagon over here, and uh, Knuckle, and then you got uh, Brandon. <laughs> the Rainbow Pride. Now, see, we don't want to get like that. We don't want to talk like that, because we're not going with that. It's got to be Skittles, Unicorn, something, but it ain't going to be like, like LGBTQ-y kind of thing. You know what I'm saying? So, let's get back on over here to... Get your ass out of the way. Dick. I will trip you. All right, so uh, what's in the box? These guys are all quiet. They only want to talk on Ray's channel. This is your deal. Okay. <laughs> so I'm telling you, there is all sorts of madness in here. And I might even do a video about installing it. So these are the shelves. These are the shelves that go on there so you can have uh, different mag carriers and all that kind of stuff. But here's kind of one of them. And let's do a little Christmas unwrapping here. Basically, you can see the holes in here. This just locks in like that. I can't put too much weight on it because it's just sitting there. I don't care about what others may say. I like Skittles. That's a cool paint job. That's right, Len. And you know what? Everybody's got the basic FDE, the brown. And uh, here's a cool picture of what it'll look like so that's exactly the kit right there so it holds i don't know x amount of things but you can see the shelves down here that i just showed off it's got the all the mounts for the pistols and i wish i had enough rifles to actually hold all this crap but someday i got something to, but you got a bunch that are running vertical and you got some that are running horizontal so old rainbow unicorn vomit skittles whatever the hell will be proud and be in the center there somewhere so that looks way better all together. Yeah, so once it's all together, obviously it's gonna look better. Thanks for that, Ray. And guys, if you order from Gallo Tech, ask for Joey and tell them Ray sent you. And I get no kickback from it, but I've been using their products for a while and they're super, super good people to deal with. Name they're is out, they're out of Utah. Utah, call it tricks. Not all tricks are for kids. I like that. I like that commando. That's pretty cool. Let's see, Rick, the safe is really Really, really to keep Rick's guns from running away. That's right. You know, you have heard that, you know, unauthorized, you know, you put a rifle down that's loaded, it can just get all scary and do things while you're not paying attention while you're gone. So, you know, I got to lock them in here so they don't do anything crazy. So that's what that is. But there is a ton, a ton of different stuff. You guys saw all the different mounts and pistol stuff and rifle crap. And, but there is, 
just boxes of all the the side ones for holding the rifles. So I got to go through here and mount all that stuff up. Should be pretty fun. So I had a good day today. I actually shot pretty darn decent today at the at Old Fort in North Carolina. The BOD Virtue of Defense uh, is the name of the range. So Frank, Frank the owner, very cool guy. He actually just got done deer hunting. <laughs> so it's kind of cool to see him. So the um all the positional shooting that we've been doing over the months utilizing 22s going to competitions and all that kind of stuff has really been paying off uh, i noticed during the 22 long rifle match i felt like it was really getting into position well and quick a lot quicker than normal so today i had a chance to run some stuff under the time just doing like small little different uh kind of different uh things so it worked out really well so i feel like i am progressing which is good so if you guys are uh, kind of stuck or maybe you're not practicing you're gonna notice when you start practicing more it's gonna definitely help uh, with getting their times down being able to shoot the last shot hopefully in the stage where a lot of the times i was timing out so there was a few a few that i had some hiccups on and uh, most of you guys probably saw that video or hopefully some of you guys did but uh, I felt like I was shooting pretty strong that day. So one was a screw up. I put the wrong dope in with that diamond back. Um, to find zero stop, it goes past the three, if that makes sense. And then I looked at my dope, it was three something. So I just clicked it. I didn't go all the way to zero and then to three. So my, all my shit was shooting like way low on the fence post. So I was hitting the fence post twice so that I can tell you that I was shooting really accurate, but I was my dope was off, so I was missing. So. That's what happens. That's how we learn. Uh, I got a little frustrated during the match, and only for a second I said, you know what, I got I to gotta just work on the next stage and get this out of my head. Practice makes perfect, John says. John was actually out there, and he got a chance to shoot for his second time out there, so it was pretty cool. Um, he's definitely getting better. I've seen some progress in his shooting, so that is pretty damn awesome. Damn, you're going to cost me more money because if it's going to loom, look that good, that's going to make me do my room. Yeah, they make kits that are a lot smaller. They'll hold like, you know, less amount. I wanted to go big so it would fill this wall. And uh, the price was like 1300 bucks. I think that's what it was. That's a t-shirt right there at Commando 97. Let's see what we got here. What Commando 97 say? Call it tricks. Yeah, not all tricks are for kids. Yeah, that is kind of cool. I might just call it tricks. That's pretty cool. Practice. What is that? <laughs> 45 Auto says. Let's see. Going to the John Wick Hotel gun room with that rack. Yeah, I'm actually trying to make it look... I want this basement to look just out, out of this world. Live studio side. This is going to be where the live chats are being held. You'll be able to see all the firearms in the back. I'll be able to turn it, you know, just about 30 degrees and get the other wall by itself and uh, just have that as a plain wall as well. So looking forward to it. Uh, this has been a, an expensive, long adventure and uh, keep plugging away at it. Got a lot of work to do. Drywall, got to move some water lines. So the plumber's got to do that too as well. So it's getting there. A lot of work taking place, but it's coming out pretty cool. Two Camp Sam could be the name of that rifle. That's actually pretty cool. I like that too. KB could fill that rack easy. Yeah, Davey J, he could fill that rack easy. Hell, he's got 10 brand new serialized uh, in secession, I guess. Is that the right word? But uh, AR uppers that he's going to be working on. You can make a display for all your hats and shirts and merch. Yeah, that'd be kind of cool. I actually want to do um, kind of the packaging and the hat stuff over on that corner just so it'll stay clean over there um and i've been slacking so i got andy nelson i haven't sent your hat out yet and tim davis i still gotta get a printer it's been busy around here had uh had some extra crazy stuff going on so it is what it is kb builds a new rifle every 17 minutes <laughs> yeah i think it's like 23 minutes now but yeah Let's see, you got any more 22 matches happening this year? Not 
Not sure. I mean, if one comes up, I actually talked to Frank, the owner, today, and it sounds like they're going to start to do one of those uh, every other month. I don't, I don't know when that'll take place, but it'll be uh, it'll be pretty interesting because I would really love to shoot them all. So I think it was going to start in February, actually, because I remember I'm saying February because I'm like, well, shit, I'll be retired by then, so that would be pretty damn awesome. Where can I get a fat, fathead poster of Rick with a rainbow warrior gun? You're gonna have to wait till I'm like lined up with it and then uh, take a picture off YouTube. Then you gotta send it to me so I can put it on the wall here. <laughs> I need to get by the post office actually too. Uh, have you ever built any 22? Oh, Commando 97, there you go, Eagle Eye. I think I'm gonna pull the trigger and uh, order that Voodoo if it hasn't been ordered yet. Definitely wanna do that. I got my new reticle in. I actually zeroed that in today on the Rainbow, uh, we'll call it the Toucan Sam. Um, with the H59, it's the Vortex HD, 4 and a half to 27, and it is, uh, loving that reticle, so that's been my, that's going to be the one that I'm going to shoot for PRS, for the 6 Creedmoor, and then the other two are the EBR2C, so I do like that, I do like that a little bit better, the new H59 reticle, not that it's new, but that's new to me, and, uh, but yeah, I ordered a brand new, I had one of those half-offs. Mac Eve, what up? I've got a box of goodies from Area 409 coming. Nice. Very nice. Handled the V22 today? No, we didn't shoot that today, actually. I shot that the other day when Ray got it. And we were zeroing it in before the match, and the thing was amazing. Um, there is something to be said about spending more money to get accuracy, and that is that is one of it. I mean, you got to have great ammo to start off with, but... When you're shooting the same ammo through uh, a Ruger RPR, which is a great rifle, shoots well. And I love the fact that you can stay in production with that rifle, no problem. Uh, there is a difference, though, when it comes to shooting tighter groups, especially at farther distances with the Voodoo. So more money, better accuracy, more like my PRS style rifle, so I can, it's more of a trainer. And that's what I'm really liking about it. The weight's going to be heavy and... Uh, it's going to be set up as a trainer. And along with that, I'll be shooting uh, some 22 long rifle PRS style matches. So that's cool. I have rebarreled a Savage FX 22 long rifle. Luther Wather makes good 22 long rifle barrels. They make great all barrels. Um, I have an older uh, 223 barrel that I had put together in AR years back. And uh, that was one of those silent, silent sleepers in the closet that shot. I, I shot up to a thousand yards with that rifle with a 75 green Hornady bullet, and uh, just amazing, amazing rifle. The barrels are bitching. So, other than that, that is it. If you got any questions, comments, concerns, let me know so I can keep going with this magic. We got 26 thumbs up. You guys need to do a better job of that. Come on now. Hit the thumbs up button if you haven't. It's right there on the bottom somewhere. Let's see. Doo, doo, doo. Thanks for the info, Eagle Eye. That was actually something we talked about with Brandon. I don't know if they talked about it on the chat earlier. But um, he had a lot of questions about the 22 long rifle and wanting to get into it. And uh, what he thought about running like something that's similar to the rifle that he has. And I guess they actually make a stock in that uh what's that what's what's that chassis you have brandon KRG Bravo. the krg bravos so it could be something that he could kind of uh have that's the same and still shoot production so pretty neat the 22 long rifle though has been a blast it's been more enjoyable than anything i tell you after shooting the six creedmoor today it shot great but man it was loud as hell um you know <laughs> it's you know it's basically uh, managing that recoil you know but it's just like damn this is so loud compared to the other day shooting the uh the 22 long rifles with the suppressors this is just like quiet everybody's just talking normal most people didn't even have ear pro in um including myself it was just a, a great enjoyable day so that was one of the bonuses i think if you were to bring your you know your kids if they're younger and we're uh, wanting to get into the sport. That is definitely the way to get to it. And as they grow up, they can progress and then start carrying those really heavy 25 
PRS, PRS rifles. rifles so that was the way to get kids into shooting for sure uh did, got any sweet tea tonight yeah, i do actually it's over there staring at me because i'm thirsty up oh, here's one right back up two is one <laughs> the other one's in a cup over there I'm glad you guys reminded me to hydrate because I start yapping and forget. Let's see. David J says, cheers. What's the cap to stay production? On per on the 22 long rifle, it's 1500 bucks. No, no. 1050 on NRL. Oh, on NRL, it's 1050. NRL 22 is 1050. Okay, that's what they're looking at right now. So the match we did was 1500. So I would have to stay with that uh, Diamondback scope. I could yep, stay under. Because uh, I was actually thinking about trying that, uh, which one was that? Strike Eagle. So that is the answer, 1050. Unfortunately, no mufflers in California. Yeah, Reb, I tell you what, I know, I feel your pain, man. I had to deal with it for, let's see, 49 minus 6. There you go. Let's see, you guys got any questions for us? What, what rifle are you looking at to stay under 1050? Mm. Is that what you guys are doing right now? Yeah. Any options out there besides the Ruger RPR, the CZ? The problem is the nicer the rifle you buy, the less, it's the crappier so optic. Yeah. And I, as I've always said, is I would rather have an expensive optic over the rifle, honestly. If you got one that doesn't track, especially when you're like 22 freaking mils, and then you got to come back and it doesn't track well. So that's not the way to do it. I would say buy a cheaper rifle. Actually, 45 Auto had commented on the, uh, the chat that was on X-Rings a little bit ago. And it was, uh, he said, Rick would say, because somebody had asked, what, what can you get? Bye, Sam. Uh, what can you get for $4,000? And he's like, Rick would say get $3,000 scope and a $1,000 rifle. And honestly, that would be the answer to that. Um, the optic is, in my opinion, more important than the rifle. To a point, obviously. You can't have a $5 rifle. True, if you can't see, you can't shoot it. Well said, John Carterman. The, uh, between if you can't see it, the optic's so crappy, blurry, and milky that you can't get, you can't even find the target. You're obviously not going to be able to shoot at it, even if you had a beautiful bitchin' rifle. So, yeah, somewhere in there, I would say... If you only got 1050, I would say <clears throat> I'd say buy the Diamondback <clears throat> full turrets. I don't know if it's 30 or 34 millimeter too, but I'd get something where you can really get some light in there uh, with a larger objective, and then uh, running on a Ruger RPR maybe with a freaking new barrel or something. Glad you looked into the Strike Eagle at least. Yeah, for sure, it's great. They're all great scopes. I'm a huge Vortex fan. Uh, I would say most of all my money in optics is in Vortex. Definitely. I mean, I got three of the the uh, HD2s, the 4.5 to 27s. Uh, what's the price limit? 1500 for production. I guess 1050 if you do an actual NRL match. 22. Is that for 22X? Yeah, 22X NRL. Tech, yeah, 22X NRL. So that is the cutoff, 1050. That doesn't matter about all the gizmo gadget bullshit you have on it, but as far as the rifle and the scope combined can only be 1050. I was going to grab one on Black Friday and send it to you to test. Bill Sweeney, what's going on, buddy? We got Bill Sweeney out there. Got a chance to uh, actually meet Bill Sweeney. He was on our squad. And when I say our squad, I mean like our squad, not like our squad. Uh, so it was really cool to meet. There was quite a few people out there, and uh, it was pretty cool to see. We got Elster's rifles in reloading. You should do a Rick Flair in entry into the new reloading room every time you start the live stream. I don't even know what a Rick Flair entry is. I've heard of Rick Flair, but I know it's on a movie or something, but I don't know anything. The SIG BDX system is a great scope combo. I have three. Nice, nice. Ranger, I don't have much experience with those. With the price of the rifle going through the roof, will they reconsider a new ceiling price? Honestly, 45 auto, I'm not sure. We just got to play by the rules until they change them. 
Let me get back here. I still gotta put a trigger in it. So. Darian, what did Darian want to see? Uh, looked in the Strike Eagle at least. Yeah. Yeah, definitely something I want to get to do a review on. If you uh, if you know of a good, good Black Friday sale or something like that, send me an email for sure. The um, I've been very optic light, and I'm starting to catch up a little bit, so it's actually nice to have ri a uh, rifle with a, a scope and not have to switch them out all the time. Rick Flair's a wrestler. Ah, I got it. Yeah, he's... Out of Charlotte. Is that the, you know me and Gene? No, no, that's Macho Man, right? Yeah, you're talking about, woo, the nature boy, Ric Flair. That's who that is. Yeah. Man. One thing you guys don't know about uh, my buddy over there is uh, he knows a little bit about old school wrestling. <laughs> Rick want to borrow a Strike Eagle. I, have, I, kid or, I kid you not. It runs well against the uh, HD2. See, that's awesome. I heard a lot of PRS style shooters are utilizing that. Um, to keep the price there, but also just, just a great ass radical. Mac, you just plain flying, limo riding Ric Flair. Oh, jet plane flying, <laughs> limo riding. See, you guys know all the shit. That is awesome. That is awesome. Hopefully, uh, Eagle Eye, he gets some videos of his new garage slash man shed, he shed, or whatever the hell it's called. I think we're going to have to have a competition. He's running all his photos. How long have I been yapping? 26 minutes, it seems like, seems like 30. Everly, there's so much cool shit in here right now. We got Everly stocks. We got, we got Brandon's, we got Brandon's rifle case. This is actually a cool case. I might have to, is that rifle in there? It's out of there, right? It's out of there, yeah. All right, I'm gonna show you guys this, I'm gonna show you guys this thing real quick. So we got the Pelican Vault. That's all right. Cleaning rod safe. YouTube safe. Okay, so some pluses and minuses. I almost missed the chair. That would really suck. So pluses and minuses to the vault system. So this is made by Pelican. There's the other piece of foam right here. Some of the nice things about it is it has ample room for holding lots of stuff. Some of the things it's got locking uh, metal lock in here. Because if you're going to fly with something like this, and this is the reason why I bring it up, we actually had to fly with our rifles to Utah and New Mexico, and there was some serious hiccups. We probably talked about it before, but I want to kind of show you guys this thing. So depending on the airline, you only get a certain amount, certain length by a certain width by a certain this, and it only adds up to like, I don't know, I think it was 121 inches or something like that. And if it doesn't comply, say it's more it's inches. 61. 61 inches yeah which is not very much this nice case right here will instantly cost you an additional two hundred dollars to to uh be able to throw into the airline so now you're looking at four hundred dollars if you ever want to return home so that is a that is a that is an issue now if you want to just protect your stuff throw it in the truck be able to have everything you want as like a kit for your rifle and your you know your uh, kestrel and your ammo and all that stuff Awesome case for that. So let's pop this thing open. It's got, uh, what's that, four, five, six? Now, six it also months. depends on the airlines. It does. Southwest, that. Southwest, doesn't matter how big it is because you can bring a surfboard, you can bring, hell, golf bags, doesn't matter. Um, it's, it, it's just considered one of your bags. So let me open this thing up and it's going to be kind of awkward because. Uh, oh, I got Ray helping me out here, Brandon. You're going to see that the foam, there's a cleaning rod, but it's very large, so he's still working on trying to design this. Now, this is something that you're going to have to, you're going to, have to cut out. It is not the tear stuff. That stuff sucks. That is, that is, you got that in? The pick and, pick and pull stuff is, is a super turnoff. Um, it wants to just keep every time you put the rifle in it wants to tear up So this is a better denser foam doesn't have all that crap in it that just plucks out. It's called Kaizen foam Kaizen foam. So once you come up with the design We actually talked about this a little bit last night and today You have wheels on I think it's this this side right here So as you're carrying this thing some of the considerations is you want to put the weight of your ammo and your heavier items down towards the wheels because if you plan this wrong and you have all the heavy weight over here you're basically carrying the whole damn thing anyways 
So something to consider, something to consider is making sure you got enough room uh, for protection, you know, from the walls. You gotta remember the airlines, these guys suck, man. They're throwing all your shit, they don't care what's in there. And you, you gotta have something that's definitely quality enough. Lockable, it's gotta be lockable. And uh, so this is a pretty cool vault. This is, uh, I have the 10, a 1720 I think is the number. And this is definitely a little bit bigger. It's probably this much fatter. And this is a lot lighter. And this is, this is lighter. This material is a little bit thinner. It does have the uh, air pressure valve in it. So that's kind of pretty cool. It does have a nice rubber seal on the top. And 50 pound weight restriction. So the heavier your case, the less gun stuff you can get in it. Very true. So what Ray said, I don't know if you guys heard, but you only get 50 pounds. So if it is over 50 pounds, so like Southwest being the best airline out there, in my opinion, I fly airlines all the time, and they've just been more cooperative than anybody else yeah. I've flown with. Except in New Mexico. Except New Mexico, that one lady. If you're watching this, have a great day. Um, I have other things to say to her. 50 pounds. <laughs> so if this thing weighed 48 pounds, like kind of that Pelican does because it's such a massive thickness of plastic, I'm exaggerating, but that just means less items you can put in here. It'll hold a lot more. <laughs> it'll hold a lot more gun stuff than it can stay under 50 pounds for sure. So that's that. Hopefully you guys, uh, something to think about if you guys are waiting for Christmas prizes, all that kind of stuff. But the Vault by Pelican. Let's see if I can close this thing. I think the pad, there we go. All right. Thanks, Brandon. Appreciate it. Appreciate it. Um, other than that, what else other stuff I got to show you? That's it. Not much. I just wanted to go live for a little bit. We were at 30 minutes, which is pretty short and weak. But um, you guys, you guys only gave me a, a 35 thumbs up. So you know, I'm sad. And I'm gonna look. I'm, we just got back from shooting. I still have my ears on my neck. So. Any other stuff before we get out of here? What the hell? Thomas Rowland says. Oh, let me run back here to the, all these comments. Dun, 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 dun. Rick so fancy. What the heck is that thing? Why always 200? I bet ATF has something to do with that. Rick should bleach his hair. My hair is getting bleached by itself. Every year, every year it's getting bleacher, <laughs> more bleached. Bleacher. Bleaching the bleach bleach. Let's see. Something like that. It's English, yeah, I, I think it's called. Uh, what the heck? So, other than that, I'm going to say uh, goodbye to these guys. You guys have a great night. And we'll see you on the next one. And uh, look for more fun live chats. Maybe we can even get Ray on here once in a while. Let's see. All right, you guys have a great night. Stay safe. Blue Healer 260's out there. Conservative sniper runner. I'm just, I'm just talking smack. No, I don't. Pretty much every night. I don't live chat every night. I try to, but it doesn't work out. <laughs> See, I want every night. <laughs> you guys have a great one. Ice House 2005. Thanks. Everybody, have a great Thanksgiving if I don't see you before then. Um, stay safe out there and uh, eat some turkey with the family. And uh, if you guys get a chance after you eat turkey, take a nap. See ya.